Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel for part two of our Pimax review coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back. In today's episode, we're going to go over all the software and setup for the Pimax Crystal. I haven't downloaded or installed any of this on my PC, nor have I connected the headset. The reason for that is to give everyone a first-hand experience of just how easy or difficult the process may be. That also leads me into the reason of why I created this review series in the first place, and that's to give you a more of an objective review of the Pimax Crystal. So what does that mean? Well, you're not going to have a review littered with opinions by me. Because, well, let's face it, your wants and needs are completely different from my wants and needs. Not to mention, your physical dimensions are different than my physical dimensions. So what I intend to do is to show you everything that I can about the Pimax Crystal from tip to tip so that you can make that educated decision whether this is going to be your next headset or maybe you should give it a pass. When you decide to pick up the Pimax Crystal, down in the description I do have an affiliate link it really means a lot if you use that link for your purchase. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does give us a little bit of a commission to keep the channel going. If you're on the fence of purchasing the Pimax Crystal due to the price tag, well, I'm happy to inform you that Pimax has now rolled out a new payment program, so that can take the burden of that initial purchase off your shoulders. Lastly, I do have one disclaimer. Pimax did send me this headset for review, but that is not going to sway anything that I'm going to show you throughout this series. If you have any comments or questions along the way, post them down below in the comments section and I'll get right back to you. If there's something that I may have missed or something that you would like to see about the Pimax Crystal, please let me know that as well. And if you enjoyed today's content, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. All right, so I think the first thing that we're gonna do is to connect all the cabling to the Pimax Crystal. We're also gonna be using the Pimax Hub for this. I know a lot of people have questions on how to hook this up. I do have a short video in episode number one. If you have not seen that, I'll post a link up here or down below in the description. Whoa. I don't know if you just saw that, but this connection just kind of fell out of that. Just keep an eye on that when you go to plug this in, because this is the cable we're going to need to connect to the back of our PC. And we're going to need a 2.0 USB. And the power adapter is going to connect right here next to our main USB out. And that's got a pretty good solid connection there. All right, so on one end of the cable, we have two USBs and a display port. The other end is another display port that's going to get connected to the Pimax. So according to their video, all of these USBs will just get connected anywhere inside the hub here. This is how the USB hub should look. We should have our two USBs going in, and you can put these anywhere into any of the USBs that are on it. Our power adapter is going to be connected to the end, as well as our main USB that's going to get connected to our PC. We also have the display port that will get connected into the back of the PC. On the other end of this cable is the other display port that's going to go into the headset itself. Now, one thing to note here, because this is a fiber optic cable, you want to be very careful about any kinks that you might get in this cable. So, what you want to do is extend this out and pretty much uncoil it as you go because if you just pull this out what's going to happen is you're going to get a kink like that and if you pull it hard enough it could disrupt that fiber optic cable so when you're uncoiling this make sure that you're unwinding it as you go so that the entire cable is straight and there's no little loops or kinks in it one thing to show on the headset is there is a picture right here over top of where we're going to be connecting the display port. So if I hold this up to that picture, you should be able to see how the connector corresponds with the picture that is over top of the display port and it should go down right like that. So let's give that a shot.
Okay, so that was it. You heard a little bit of a click, and we are in. So really wasn't much to that. On the back of the headset, we have a channel here so that we can put our cable through. The other thing that I did find out is this top strap has all the wiring going through it from the battery. So just be careful with it. You do not want to damage this top rubber strap. Okay, so that's pretty much going to take care of setting up all the cabling for the Pimax Crystal. We're not going to connect it to the PC yet until we get all the software downloaded. So let's hop over there right now. All right, so now that we're at the PC, let's take a look at some of the software. Now, some of this is going to be required to use the Pimax headset, and some of this software is going to be optional, but is highly recommended to really help get the most performance out of the Pimax crystal. So the first website that you need to go to is Pimax.com. Once you get here, we're going to go all the way up to the top where it says Support. Once you're here, you're going to go down to Download Center, and then you're going to download the Pimax Play for the Pimax Crystal. This is pretty much the only bit of required software you need to run the Pimax Crystal headset. The next two applications we're going to go over are optional, but highly recommended if you want to get the best performance out of the Pimax Crystal. The first bit of software we're going to go over today is the Pimax XR application by the developer Bat. I cannot pronounce your last name, so I'm not going to try. And he has done a fantastic job in creating the Pimax XR. As well as the next application we're going to go over, the OpenXR Toolkit. A little insight on what the Pimax XR application does is it alleviates the need for us to run Steam VR in the background to connect our Pimax Crystal headset. Now that's going to greatly improve the performance of the Pimax Crystal. So that's why we're going to download this one next. To do that, we're going to go over to Releases. From here, we're going to scroll down. There's also some instructions on the wiki. You can click there. At the very bottom, in the Assets section, we'll see Pimax XR. Just left-click on that, and it will start the download. While that's downloading, let's go over the very last application, which is the OpenXR Toolkit. Again, links will be down below in the description. The OpenXR Toolkit unlocks a whole suite of features that we can use in our VR headsets. If you're unfamiliar with this toolkit, I'll post a link down below in the description for a video that I did on the OpenXR Toolkit. But for now, the only thing we need to do is to scroll down and to click on the download for the latest version. Once you have all three of these applications downloaded, you want to install them on your PC. I'm not going to bore you with that, so I'll bring you back once I get that finished. All right, so we've gone ahead and downloaded and installed all these applications, and I've got each one of them open so we can take a look at what they're going to do for us. Over here on the left, we have the Pimax XR runtime, and at the very top, we're going to make sure that we have this checked for Pimax XR. This is where we're going to be able to bypass Steam VR for using our headset. Below that, we can also control the emulation of the controllers. So if we tick on the drop down, we can either switch between an Oculus Touch or the Windows Mixed Reality controllers. For now, we're just going to leave it at Windows Mixed Reality. Below that, you can adjust your joystick dead zone. We can also enable the Visual Play Space Guardian. This is so you don't walk out of your play space and accidentally hit a wall. Below the Play Space Guardian, we have a couple more options that we can choose. The first one is Prefer Frame Rate Over Latency. Keep in mind that if you do decide to check this, you will not be able to use Smart Smoothing inside of the Pimax software. Below that, we have Lock to Half Frame Rate. Now, for those of you who may be wondering, well, when would I want to use that and when wouldn't I? Well, put it to you this way, if you're not using a 4090 and you're not able to achieve a constant 45 FPS, then locking it to half frame rate will do no good for you. Below that is the allow use of the eye tracker. You need to tick this if you're going to be using the auto IPD or DFR, which is dynamic foveated rendering. You need to make sure that you have that checked. Below that, we have the show mirror window. This is just going to populate a new screen for us if we want to do screen recording. 
Below that, we have enable usage telemetry, and I'm just going to keep that off. So for my setup today, I'm going to check the allow use of eye track. I'm not going to lock to half frame rate, and that's because I'm using a 3080 Ti, so I doubt I'll be able to hit 45, but we'll see here in a second. And at the top, for prefer frame rate over latency, I'm just going to leave it off. For me, I would rather have lower latency, means less stutters. The next application we're going to go over is the OpenXR Toolkit companion app. To be able to use the OpenXR Toolkit menu to adjust all of your settings, you must be in VR and you must be inside a Microsoft Flight Simulator to get that to populate. The companion application will just give us some basic things that we can set for the Toolkit menu inside of VR. So for these options, I keep everything pretty much as default. The only thing at the very bottom, you want to make sure that you have Microsoft Flight Simulator checked. At the top, we have our Pimax software, and as you can see, it looks like it wants to take us through a couple steps at the bottom, but we're not going to run through that yet, only because we don't have the Pimax connected to our PC. All right, so at this point, we've got all the software on our PC. We have our headset ready to go, get connected. So I'm going to turn off the computer. You'll only hear me through the microphone on the video recorder but hopefully that'll do until we get it connected back up. So cross our fingers, hope everything goes well. I'll see you back here in a little bit. Now, I do see a slight issue with this already is because this is so short, I'm gonna have to kind of drape this on top of the PC case because you've only got the length of that to be able to plug in your display ports. Let me hook this up and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so here's the wiring from the back of my PC. This right here is gonna be the display port that we've connected right here. And then this is the USB that I have connected, I hope you can see it, that I connected right here. Now because the length of the wires, I can't, I've gotta drape this on top of my PC because I have nowhere else to put it. I guess I could put it down next to the PC and jam it down here and do it that way. The issue with me putting the hub on the side of the PC is when I push the PC in its space, the hub will also get pushed in as well. Therefore, I will not be able to see if the USB is connected properly inside of the hub. The problem is you don't want this connection to come loose and fall out like I showed you earlier. So by having it on top, will allow me to make sure that's connected. Let me get everything finished up here and I'll bring you back. All right, we're back. I've got everything connected with the Pimax. All the software is installed on the PC. So now what I want to do is fire up the software and see if there's any firmware updates for the headset. And we'll just see how that process will be. All right, so from the desktop, we're just going to double click on the Pimax software and get that opened up. I'm going to log in as a guest. Okay, so now we've got the Pimax software open. We're going to run through the setup process for the Crystal. I have not powered it on yet. I want to see if it's going to tell us we need the power on the headset because I know a lot of people are going to probably forget to do that. So let's just see what it does. So the first thing it says, view and set up your Pimax. So we'll hit next step. Next step, next step. All right, so as you can see, it says the Pimax crystal is disconnected. So that probably means we need to turn on the power to the crystal itself. So I believe the power button is right here, this little button. Let's see what happens when we press it. Nothing. Maybe I gotta hold it. Nothing. All right. Huh. Okay, well, that's a stupid mistake, but that's why we have it all on camera. I forgot to put in the battery. Elementary, my dear dum dum. So let's go ahead and pop in one of the batteries. Now let's try the power button. All right, so yeah, this little button at the top here, that is going to be your power button. It didn't come on right away. I pressed it and then waited a second, and now it's lit up in blue. So 
I'm assuming that means it's on. It looks like what happened was when I initially turned it on, the little blue light came on, and then it flashed green and went back to blue again. But if I look over here on my computer monitor, it looks like we have a firmware update. So let's go ahead and do that update and see how that's going to go. All right, so it looks like to do a firmware update, we can't just leave it connected to a display port to do the update. Looks like we're going to have to connect one of the USB-C cables to the side of the headset. So let's go back over to the headset and get that taken care of. All right, so we're just going to use one of these supplied USB-C cables, and I'm going to plug that into the side of the headset right here. And I'm going to take the other end of this, and I'm going to plug this into the USB hub that came with the Pimax Crystal. And let's see if it works through the hub. All right, now that we have everything connected, we need to click the Continue button to upgrade. But I don't see a continue button anywhere. I see a confirm button. So I'm assuming that's it. So let's go ahead and hit the confirm button. All right, so this will give us some of the updates that is on the latest firmware. And we'll just go ahead and click continue here. That's probably where they meant to hit continue. I'm not sure how long this is going to take. I'm not going to bore you with that. I'll bring you guys back once the firmware has been updated. All right, we're back, and the firmware has been updated on the Pimax Crystal. It took approximately 10 minutes for that to happen. I will say about midway through, I did have to hit the continue button on the screen again. I'm not sure why that is. Maybe it was just a glitch, but I did have to do that one time, and then it finished out for me. Um, once that finished, I didn't have any instructions on the screen now what to do. So I'm assuming at this point we can disconnect the USB-C because the only thing on the screen, which I'll show you here, is just telling us to set up our room. So let's disconnect this and see what happens. All right, the light is still like a little purplish color, so I guess that's okay. Before we go any further in today's video, I would like to apologize for the audio. I had Microsoft Flight Simulator running in the background, and unbeknownst to me, it was recording all of the background music and overlaying it over my voice. So throughout the remainder of this video, you will see me switching back and forth between my headset audio and the camera audio. Again, I apologize, and please try not to let it distract from the content. Thanks again. All right, so we're now on the established tracking page. And if we take a look here, it says to place the headset in a location visible from the base stations. But we don't have base stations. We have inside-out tracking. So what do we do? I'm just going to keep the Pimax sitting here on the table and I'm going to face it towards the computer so it's not hitting all these lights that I have here. And maybe it'll work. Let's see what happens. We're going to click the next. Okay, stand in the middle of your cleared space while holding the headset. According to the screen, it looks like we're just going to kind of hold up the VR set, level Okay, I guess that'll work. So we're just going to hit Calibrate Center. And you want to hold this as steady as you can. Alright, I guess that finished. We'll hit Next. Place the headset on a stable surface. And now we're going to enter the height from ground and click Calibrate. So... What I'm going to do is just set this directly on the ground and see what happens. And then we're just going to hit zero centimeters because it'll be on the ground. Now, when you set it on the ground, make sure that the front of the headset is flat, that it's not tilting up. If it's tilting up, it's probably going to skew the result. So make sure it's flat. We'll just put one centimeter. All right, hit next says we're all set up all right so I guess the next thing we have to do is to see if we can get these controllers to pair up so let's turn on the controller by hitting the Pimax button and I had already charged all these so we should be good to go there let me turn the headset so we can see the controller and yep yeah, okay cool so right there on the screen you can see that it has already uh, seen the controller here so that's good all right, so I think the next thing we're going to take a look at are the settings inside of the Pimax Crystal. 
So if we go down to device settings, it'll bring up all of our settings here. We have several different menus over here on the left hand side. So we'll start at the top and work our way down. Under the device menu, we have our tracking mode. So we are using inside out tracking. Below that is the display refresh rate. We're just gonna keep that on 90 for now. Below that, we have the backlight option and default it's set at 100. If you are gonna be using any of the local dimming, then it is recommended to keep the backlight at 100. Otherwise, it's really going to dim your displays. Below the backlight, we have our eye tracking option. Now, for those of you who are gonna be using the dynamic foveated rendering inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator using the OpenXR Toolkit, then you have to turn on your eye tracking inside the Pimax software. So like we did earlier in the Pimax XR, we turned on eye tracking. We also need to turn eye tracking on here as well. Now we also have the option to calibrate our eye tracking We'll do that in just a second once we get through all these. All right, so I know that my IPD is about 62 millimeters, so I'm just gonna go ahead and set that right now. We're still gonna try out the auto IPD adjustment, and let's just see how close that we get to that IPD. Below that, we have gesture analog controller. We're just gonna keep that off, and controller simulates the index controller. We're just gonna keep that off. The next menu down on the left is our games menu. Here's where we can set individual game settings or common settings that we're gonna use over all of our games and applications that we'll use the Pimax Crystal 4. Under the render quality, we have a couple different settings here. Minimum, balanced, maximum. We can also choose to have a customized value. Now Pimax is still using this slider system from zero to two. I can only assume that means 200% render scale. So what we're gonna do for now is we're gonna keep it on one. Now, once we spawn into the sim, we're gonna be utilizing the OpenXR toolkit to manually set our render quality. Now below that, we have the fixed foveated rendering we have the ability to adjust our fixed foveated rendering as well as our dynamic foveated rendering. So if you're going to be using the OpenXR toolkit for that, then you don't want to add any foveated rendering inside the Pimax software because now you're just double dipping yourself and, and it's really going to confuse things. For the foveated rendering, we're just going to turn that off in the Pimax software. Below that we have smart smoothing, so we're also going to turn that off. Again, I don't think they've got this working so well yet, but that's something we are going to test. Hidden area mask, we're going to keep that checked. Compatible with 5 only, we're going to just leave that unchecked. And then below here you can adjust all your reds, greens, and blues if you would like to change any of those. Now before you move on, you need to make sure that you hit the apply button at the bottom for any of the settings to take effect. Once that's done, we're going to head down to the General tab over on the left-hand side. Alright. Alright, so it looks like we have a little hiccup here with the program, so let's let it do its thing. Yeah, to me it looks like all the settings stuck here. It just locked up on us, so. And that's the whole purpose of this review series is so that I can show you the entire process on things that you may run into when you're doing this setup process. So, let's keep going. All right, look, we stopped responding again. All right, the next tab down on the left-hand side is the General tab, so we click on that. Let's see what's in here. Starting at the top, we have Headset Firmware, so this is the new firmware we just upgraded to. Headset as default audio output device. We'll also test the microphone on the headset here in just a little bit once we get into Microsoft Flight Sim. Below that, we have the Home Experience, so we can either turn the Pimax Home or the Experience Home on when you're not in the flight sim. Now for me in the past, when I was using the 8KX, whenever I turned the home experience off, seemed to give me 
less lag in between going in and out of VR and I think it also helped reduce some of my stutter so we're just going to leave this off because I'm not using this headset for anything other than Microsoft Flight Simulator. Screen time off we're going to leave set at 20 seconds and it looks like everything else we're just going to leave as it is so let's go down to the next menu which is the advanced. Alright so it looks like we have the auto lens setting and it's already set at the 35 ppd. I'm assuming that when they do come out with new lenses this would automatically switch the lens settings for you you wouldn't have to manually do it below that is some IPD adjustments and these are not a mechanical IPD adjustment these are a software IPD adjustment so I would really recommend to keep these at zero and only adjust your IPD in the device tab right here lastly all the way at the bottom we have our local dimming level okay so that's pretty much all the Pimax software now, as far as the other two bits of software I showed you earlier, the Pimax XR and the OpenXR Runtime, you do not need to have those applications running in the background. Once you have all of those set up, you can just keep them closed and you're good to go. The Pimax software, on the other hand, from Pimax, you do need to keep that running when you want to spawn into VR from in the Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'm going to take this headset off, switch to the microphone here, and let's see what the audio quality is on that set. And I will also take any of my equalizers off so you can get a raw audio from this headset. Okay, so I just did it. So just to let everyone know, I did hit the IPD button by accident, which is right over here on the left-hand side. I thought that might have been a volume, but that's for your IPD. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run through the calibration for the headset. All right, looks like we went through that. Now we're using the controller to um, fast forward or to move through the screens here. So I'm just gonna hit A. All right, it works. So, okay, so we went through the whole calibration process and looks like that worked. All right, yeah, it looks like the automatic IPD adjustment for, for whatever reason is not working at all. Uh, as, soon as, I, as soon as I put the headset on, it tells me to adjust the headset either up or down, but then it has like some bars that it wants you to look at and it, it goes away like that, and it's got some writing underneath of it that tells you you have to look at those bars so it can adjust, but it doesn't even stay up long enough for you to read it or to even look at it, and when it goes away, nothing happens on the IPD on the screen. So I think the automatic IPD is not working the way it's supposed to yet. All right, so because of the issues I'm having with the auto IPD adjustment, and again, I'm gonna test this out in the future in another video, but for a first time experience video, I just wanna show everyone what you could encounter as well. We're just gonna manually set the IPD at 62, and uh, we should be good to go there. I'm gonna auto calibrate one more time just to make sure that's set up. Then we're gonna jump into Microsoft Flight Simulator and see what happens. All right, so as you can see, the FPS counter that I have at the top right now, we're only getting about six FPS. Now, once it finishes loading everything in here, it's probably gonna shoot up to about 20 FPS. But that's still not really very good. But let me show you what kind of render scale we're looking at here. Now, again, I'm not showing you the mirror window so that you get an idea of what kind of graphics that you could expect to see out of this headset. I'm only doing it merely to show you the OpenXR toolkit because you're not able to see that unless I'm showing you the mirror mode. So as you can see in the render scaling, we're at 4312 
by 5102, which is really, really high. So from what I've seen in a lot of YouTube videos, turning the render scaling down to about 3500 is kind of that sweet spot. So we're going to try that in the OpenXR Toolkit. At the very top, if you go over to System, we're going to go down to Override Resolution, and then we're going to select Yes. Below that, we're going to select 3500 by 4142, and as you can see, we need to exit our VR session for these settings to take effect, so let's go ahead and do that right now. All right, we're spawned back in VR now, and as you can see, the FPS counter is about 32. Now keep in mind, at 32 FPS, we are on a 3080 Ti, we do not have any traffic, and we don't have any weather turned on. Now at 32 FPS, I do notice a little bit of lag in the headset uh, when I'm turning from side to side. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that in the mirror window or not, but it is there. All right, so that's gonna finish us up with the software setup process for the Pimax Crystal today. As you can see, we did run into a couple of issues, but they were kind of minor and we were able to work our way through them. I do wish that they would have a little bit better instruction when we're going through everything because it didn't quite tell us when to unplug things and, you know, just things of that nature. Now, what I did like about this headset was the audio quality that came out of these speakers, having them off the side of your ears. It really gives you an amazing sense of immersion. Not to mention, you can literally feel the bass in these speakers. So, they are fantastic. The biggest con that I noticed about the headset is the latency or lag that I experience when I'm turning from side to side. And it was almost like, I'm not sure if I was able to get that in the video properly for you, but it's almost like the edges of the screen when I turn my head are kind of tracking behind me and I could see it moving. So for some people that might be a deal breaker. It might also be because I'm on a 3080 Ti. But that also goes to show you that anyone with a lesser graphics card than a 3080 Ti, you're not really going to get the full experience out of this headset. Now, the other thing that I want to touch on real quick is the comfort level. Now, I did go over this in episode number one that the face gasket does not fit flush on my face. So that creates some pressure points at certain spots. So over a period of time, I do feel those pressure points. Now, I was in this headset for about an hour and a half, and it didn't hurt or anything that I had to take it off. Now, in episode one, I did measure and show you how I did the measurements on my head, so you will be able to see if this is going to fit you better than me or not. Now, I think in the future, once we have some advancements in our GPUs, that we'll be able to unlock the full potential of this headset. Until then, we've got to kind of scale that back a little bit, but that doesn't really detract from the actual picture quality, I should say. Because the picture quality, the saturation, the colors, I mean, everything in this headset really does pop. So in closing, I hope everybody got a great feel of how this is to set up for your first time. And if you have any comments or questions, please let me know down below in the comments. If there's something that you would like to see about this headset that I have not shown, please let me know down there on that as well. In any case, I want to thank everybody for joining us here on the channel today. If you enjoyed today's content, make sure you hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you would like to see part three of the series, click up here if it's available.